The Gamo Swarm Magnum 10X 3i is a brake barrel air rifle with an advertised velocity of 1300 feet per second. Most people find that the 22 pellets shoot at approximately 1000 feet per second though. It comes with one 10 round magazine and a 3x9 scope. The magazine is inertia fed and clicks into place on top of the barrel. The overall length is over 49 inches and the barrel length is 21 inches. The weight of the gun is a hefty 9.8 pounds, which you definitely feel, especially when you're standing up to try to take a shot. There is a suppressor on the front of the barrel to keep the noise down a little bit. That is nice to have on there. However, it does add quite a bit of weight way out there in front of you. So doing those standing shots, that's uh, pretty difficult. The stock is made of a glass filled with nylon. There is an access hole above the grip that I found that is really harsh on your fingers and eventually they made my fingers bleed so there are some sharp edges around the gun there are some sharp edges that you could kind of round off and that would be very helpful all right guys i'm putting you somewhat close to the target out here and uh hopefully i don't shoot you hopefully it's not that inaccurate like i said i'm using the gamo red fire rounds which are let's see 15.4 grains says extreme accuracy right on there so we'll see i lubed up my barrel go ahead and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this i've used the gamo rocket and the gamo red fire pellets both of these rounds are advertised as extremely accurate but that is one of the biggest issues i've had with this gun so far is that it is not consistently accurate and i have a feeling that it may have where i was a lot aiming on that one was right to the left it was on the red but to the left so on the right side of or the left side of that red. Gamo advertises that you can use really any 22 caliber pellet in their guns. It doesn't have to be the Gamo brand specifically. Lubing the barrel does seem to help accuracy quite a bit. And I've seen people use chain wax, which doesn't seem to run down into the mechanism as much. And I think that's their rationalization uh, of using that wax instead of like chain lube or something like that. Again, right in the middle. And I'll do one more just to uh, make sure that I have a good average. And we'll adjust the scope. We'll adjust the scope after this one. See if we can get on target here, get, get it zeroed. So again, this is 30 yards out. That's really not bad. I'm gonna adjust the scope to the right and see what we can come up with. All right, so I've adjusted the scope six clicks to the right. We'll see if we can get zeroed here. This is actually a lot better than my other ammo was doing for this gun. So if this, uh, this goes well, then it might just turn around my opinion of this gun. Uh, one guy I watched actually did use motorcycle chain wax. So that's something to keep in mind to spray your pellets with that stuff before using them, that'll take up that little extra space around the pellet, hopefully give you that added accuracy that you want. Um, I haven't had a crazy amount of luck with this, but it definitely has helped. Aiming dead center on that one as well. And we'll get this third shot for an average. So I'm just leaning over the truck to get a pretty good sight picture here. Just leaning right over my truck and uh, getting pretty stable against there. So I would say there's very little user error going on with this. So we'll see how those turned out. Okay, well I'm back and it looks like they are a pretty tight group still. And so I'm gonna try to zoom us in and see what we can see here. All right, so I've gone six more clicks to the right and three clicks up. See if I can get a zero to where we're hitting red. At this range, it should be very accurate. So, should be able to be in that red pretty easily. And last time I was shooting this gun, the problem I was having is that the scope wasn't adjusting it whatsoever.
I gotta say, with this ammo, this gun's doing pretty good. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've shot quite a few rounds at this point. I've put a new target up, and I wanna see if it's gonna continue to be accurate or if there's something going on with this scope. Um, I've shot at a few squirrels around here and I've missed. And so I have a feeling that something's going on. So I wanna check it out and see what it's doing exactly at 30 yards. Looks to me like it's high and to the right. And it wasn't that long ago when I had uh, sighted it in, got it zeroed. As a reminder, everything's tight, everything's lubed, using the same rounds as I was before. So this should be dead on. All right, so this is the grouping I'm getting. I don't know what's going on. So hard to say, I'm gonna tape these up and shoot some more at it and see if I've, I can get this scope zeroed. Um, I have a feeling that this gun is just super inaccurate. All right, we'll see if we can get some good groupings here. Um, I'm gonna spray a little bit of just regular gun oil down the barrel and see if that helps. I know that we don't wanna get oil into the mechanism. However, I don't think a little bit of oil down the barrel is gonna hurt anything. It seems to be giving it a little bit of accuracy. So anything to help this accuracy. Let's see how it does. Here we go. This gun does have a little bit more felt recoil than 22 LR, which was unexpected really high. for me. It's a very mechanical and feel. I'm you can feel that spring right on that red. In the piston. Um, you can definitely feel that it's a mechanical operating gun. That one looks like it's high too. Seems like it's consistent wherever it lands and it may be a broken scope. Maybe a broken scope. Looks to me like that's a tight grouping off target. So if you notice, a lot of people doing tests on these guns will have a tight grouping, but they're off target. Man, I don't know, it's not very consistent. And in order to get anything done with this air rifle, you have to have consistency. I, I think that may be a scope issue, but uh, regardless, I mean, if it's this bad, I'm probably just gonna send mine back. They sell the gun with this scope and it should work with this scope. Gamo does provide a five-year warranty on their rifles, although I'm not sure how many rounds the gas piston will fire, how many pellets the spring will actually fire before it fails. A lot of people are reporting a loss of power between 1,000 and 6,000 shots, although they are all over the place. I have scoured the internet for answers on this one because longevity is very important to me. And especially if you're gonna use this in a scenario where um, you're, you're keeping it as a backup for survival and things like that, or prepping, I think that it's really important that you have a reliable rifle that you can carry with you for years and years and have it be self-sustaining. And that's kind of one of the biggest points for me for having an air rifle is that it is self-sustaining. You don't need to go out and fill a canister with air. You don't need to do any of that. You can just pump it and you're ready to go. I haven't found the answer to this question. A lot of people are saying between 1,000 and 6,000 shots. I don't know how accurate that is. People have uh, even said it only lasted 600 shots. And then I've seen other stuff that says over 100,000 or 200,000. So really it's all over the place. And uh, all I can fall back onto to give you this information is the five-year warranty. So they do not make replacement parts, but they do have the five-year warranty that you can fall back on and they will replace the entire rifle if something goes wrong with it. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that gave you somewhat of an idea of how the Gamo 10X Swarm Magnum can do. This is the Gen 3 model. It seems to cycle the rounds in pretty reliably. I haven't had any issues with that so far. I'm really impressed with the velocity this thing is putting out. Uh, it seems really powerful, but accuracy wise, it seems to put in a nice group and then the group switches and ends up somewhere else. I don't know if that's a scope issue or not. This scope is mounted nice and tight. Everything else is tight on this gun. So 
I really don't know where to look as far as what's causing the accuracy issues with this thing. It looks nice, it fires nice, everything about this gun seems nice, but the accuracy problem is something that I just can't deal with when I'm out uh, plinking around and shooting at squirrels, uh, trying to get rid of pests. There's no way that you're going to be able to use this thing, um, you know, with this kind of accuracy. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. This is my first one, so I'm just getting the hang of it. Um, anyways, be sure to uh, check out my upcoming ones. I'll be doing a lot more, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.